On this edition of Titans All Access, Rashawn Evans leads the Tennessee Titans in tackles. And number 54 is never at a loss for words. That's why Evans is this week's Nissan Insider. Titans radio game day analyst Dave McGinnis breaks down the Titans' two red zone takeaways in this week's Beneath the Surface. After a long layoff, time to head back to Wyatt's world to discuss the Titans All-Stars. We introduce you to the Tennessee Titans Walter Payton Community Man of the Year. And General Manager John Robinson previews this Sunday's opponent, the NFC South champion New Orleans Saints. All that and more on Titans All Access, which starts right now. Welcome to Titans All Access. This is Amy Wells. I'm Mike Keith. We're glad you're here for another week as we move deeper and deeper into the season. And we always like to begin Titans All Access by asking Amy Wells a question because quite frankly, we never know what she's gonna say. So Amy. Great. Tennessee Titans player on the current roster, most likely to run for political office after his career is over. Definitely Rashawn Evans. Why? Because he loves the people. He loves the people. He's the man of the people. He's a man of the people. The proof of this actually came last spring when the Titans caravan was held, and we've been doing it for 20 years. Sometimes it's hard to get guys really fired up about going out to several stops. Right. Not Rashawn Evans. No. Nope. Rashawn Evans is a man of the people, and in this Nissan Insider, he explains why. Look, you know how I get when I'm on my game. No blood, no sweat, no gain. I don't really want to hear about nothing. The Titans caravan has been going on for over 20 years. The 2019 caravan, Rashawn Evans set a record. You appeared on Titans caravan more than any man who has ever been part of a caravan. Why did you try to go you tried to go on every stop. You couldn't do it because of a, a, a death in the family. Why did you decide to do that? Well, I'm going to be honest with you. My my first initial mindset when I first started the Titans Caravan was, you know, they, they called me. It was like, look, we want you to do the Titans Caravan. And I did it for the first time. And, you know, I, f I kind of fell in love with it after the first little trial run. And, you know, after that, I was kind of like thinking to myself, I, I might as well just do every single one of them just to really get to know <laughs> some of these fans. So I was like, sure, I'm not doing anything anyway at home. I'm, I mean, I'm bored anyway. I was like, you know what, I'm going to try to just commit myself to try to do it every single one of these times caravan my almost got close but like you said i was able i was cut kind of short you know because of the death of my family but you know i enjoyed every bit of it now some guys over the years we've had to uh cajole to get them to go mm. so to hear this is totally opposite of what we normally get what do you like so much about being out among the people that mm, way i feel like i feed off of other people's energy i like being around other people people that are excited about you know, the team, I feed off of that stuff, and, you know, it, it gets me more excited when I have, you know, people that I've never met before tell me about their stories, tell me about some of the things that, you know, I feel like I can learn personally in life, and I was able to do that both, you know, from adult to all the way down to little kids, so, I mean, just experience like that, you know, I feel like I have the mindset of just n no day is promised, and, you know, any day that you try to seize with, you know, just learning more about other people than about yourself, I feel like you gain from that. Have you always been a people person? I was, I would definitely say, um, even my mom tells me that all the time. She would say, you know, she always says to get out more. And, she doesn't want you to be a homebody. Exactly. She don't want me to be a homebody. And, you know, I felt like <laughs> with that Tyrese Caravan, that was the first time I was like, I'm going to take advantage of that just to show her that, you know, I'm, I'm actually doing something and, you know, I'm, I'm not just like a, like you were just saying, uh, homebody. Well, your first round pick, you yeah. played you <laughs> national champion from Alabama and yeah. all this. Everybody knows who you are. Are you surprised by that? 
I don't really look into it like that. I, I see it as just, you know, I'm a regular person. And just with the Titans Caravan, I was approaching it just like that. I was just trying to use that opportunity to really just, you know, really learn about people, really trying to just see a different aspect of life of, you know, how people, you know, think about certain things. And, you know, just to have the opportunity too and an honor to be able to go out there and, you know, represent the Tennessee Titans like I did. I mean, it was a great experience for me. Speaking of relationships, earlier this year on Titans All Access, we did a feature with you and Jayon Brown going out to see season ticket members. Mm. How tight are you with Jayon Brown? Can you describe it? Yeah, um, it, it feels like it gets close. We get closer and closer each day. Like it's kind of funny because, you know, me and Jayon, when we first, when I first met Jayon, I remember him from you know past you know camps and other stuff and. Me visiting UCLA, which he, where he's, his alma mater is. Oh, you took an official there. Took it, took an official visit there. So I mean, we kind of go back from during that time, and you know, it's funny how we ended up being on the same team, and you know, ever since we we met up with each other, I remember the first day we met up with each other, we just kicked off ever since then. And me and Jayon have more of like a, a relationship where you know, whenever we out there on that field, I feel like I, I already know preset before he even tells me what, what, what he what he's trying to get across to me or what he wants to do. And you know, the more and more you play with somebody, the more and more you hang out with somebody, I feel like all of that stuff is it, it comes all in one, and I feel like you you starting to see that on the field. And there are a bunch of guys like that on this defense. No, I mean, no. Byard and mm -hmm. Landry, the guy you came in with. Yeah. How much of a family type bond are you guys already building among the young guys on this defense? Um, I would say it's really tight. It's, it's even getting closer and closer as the season goes along. Because I just feel like everybody individually just, you know, they want to play the best possible game we could possibly play in. You know, what that comes with is accountability from each and every individual, knowing that a mistake here, a mistake there, you, you let your, your brother down. So. With that type of mindset from each person, I feel like we just try to become close and close, and then with that type of mindset, it helps us play better each, each person. Since she's one for one, let's ask Amy Wells another question. Where are we going next on Titans All Access? The playoffs. Well, hopefully. Or Wyatt's World. Wyatt's World would be correct. Jim Wyatt makes his triumphant return to Titans All Access next. Welcome back to Titans All Access. It is time to go into Wyatt's world. I'm Amy Wells, joined by Jim Wyatt from TitansOnline.com. Jim, a lot of news in the Titans world this past week. So I want to start with the kickers. Ryan Suckup was moved to injured reserve. Ryan Santoso was released. Why are we seeing all of these kicker moves right now? Well, it's finally getting the team in a position where it can carry one kicker on the roster. roster and Greg Joseph is that guy. He signed him off of the Carolina Panthers practice squad. He'd previously been with the Browns where he was their kicker in 2018 and he handled kickoffs. And now the Tigers will have one guy who can do all of it. Kicking has been an issue, obviously, for this team this season, eight of 18 on the year. The hope is Joseph can come in here, get the job done and, and have that be a position that you just don't worry about, which is the way it's really been around here since the team's been in Nashville. Another piece of news is the Pro Bowl players were announced. Two guys going to the Pro Bowl from the Tennessee Titans as it stands right now. First is Derrick Henry in his first Pro Bowl appearance. What is it about this season that really put him over the top to get him to Orlando? Well, I think he's been good from the get-go. I, mean, I think in previous years, he's kind of picked up steam as the second year, uh, second half of the season has gone on. Last year, he really had most of his success down the stretch. This year, you know, he has five 100-yard games already. He's over 1,300 rushing yards. He has 271 carries. And last season, he had 215 after 14 games. So they've been able to rely on him, and he certainly deserves to be there with the best players in the NFL. Another one of the best players in the NFL is Titans punter Brett Kern. What is it about him and his consistency? Why is he so valuable to this team? Well, you talk about guys you can count on. I mean, you know what you're getting with Brett Kern. He's been so consistent. It's crazy to think when he ended up here in 2009 uh, after being waived by the Broncos, he thought he'd play a couple of seasons and, and maybe call it a career. Here we are 11 seasons later, he's still going strong. He, he's got corner angle kicks down. He's got great hang time. He can hit a bomb for you if you need to. He can hit the knuckleball. His net is outstanding. He's been a guy that uh, he's been this team's most consistent player, certainly three years in a row. That's why this is his third Pro Bowl trip. Now the Titans also have six alternates. Explain for me what exactly an alternate is and then who are those guys? 
the I'll give you the guys first, and then I'll get into maybe what it means. Ryan Tannehill, Cameron Byard, Logan Ryan, Jerome Casey, Roger Saffold, and Bo Brinkley. And what that means, and, and, and the team doesn't publicly say what uh, alternate they are. They rank them as far as if, if one guy drops off, this guy could get in. Some of these guys are higher up than others. You know, I think Ryan Tannehill certainly has a good chance to go. I'll put it that way if, if somebody else pulls out. Uh, and there's a scenario where several of these guys could end up in Orlando. It's just a couple of seasons ago where the Titans had six players in Orlando. Three of them were initially elected and then three of them became late additions. So we'll see how that plays out. Were there any surprises this year in terms of the Pro Bowl announcements? Well, I think, you know, Logan Ryan, I think, as far as guys who maybe deserve to go, I mean, Logan Ryan, I thought, had an outstanding year. You know, still could potentially get there, but thought he might get there. I, I thought the Titans would have more than two. Tannehill, when this season started, who would have thought that Ryan Tannehill would be in a position to go to the Pro Bowl? And that's the way it's played out. Kevin Byard, obviously, a guy who's been there before that, you know, he would like to see him given an opportunity again. We'll see how some of these play out. Jim White, always a pleasure to have you here. Guys, there's still so much to come on Titans All Access. Coming up, we're going to spend some time getting to know Jayon Brown and Behind the Flame. But coming up next, we are going beneath the surface with Coach Mack. Stick around. <laughs> Welcome back to Titans All Access. This is Coach Mack, game day color analyst for Titans Radio. Today, we're going to go beneath the surface to look at two timely interceptions by the Titans defense in the red zone that had a big impact on the game Sunday. First play we're going to look at is second seven. Ball is on the plus 20 yard line. It's in the first quarter. This is a great example of a bogey or a disguise by the Titans defense. You can see they're lined up. They look like they're in man-to-man -man defense here. And what they've done, they have given the quarterback who has emptied the backfield, and he's reading man-to-man. -man. They're going to go into five under two deep, but they time it off of the quarterback's leg and off of the count. He's pointed out the man-to-man -man defense. Now they roll and evolve. Perfect timing into a five under two deep zone. He looks to his right. The throw is not there that he wants because he thought he was getting man coverage. He's got zone coverage. Now he comes back to the opposite sides, tries to manipulate the cylinder, is getting some good pressure up inside. On the outside now, he looks at who he thinks is the running back running without anybody covering him. Kenny Vaccaro has taken an excellent 45 degree exit angle, gets a great directional delivery key off the quarterback. Once the front hand comes off the ball, he knows the, the football is getting ready to be thrown. He breaks when that front hand comes off the ball. He knows his interception point and he drives. This is a very, very good job technically and being very aware by Kenny Vaccaro. We're now looking at second and four. The ball is now on the plus four yard line. There's a minute 10 left in the third quarter. We're now looking at a man-to-man -man defense down here on a five-man front as Watson starts his move. He fakes the run. Rashawn Evans really does a nice job. He's a big part of this because he does not take the run fake. He gets back to get underneath and get in the vision of Watson as he's starting to throw. Big Jeff Simmons has done a nice job of two-hand forcing the center back. He realizes now, with the cylinder being as tight as it is here, he's not going to be able to put pressure on the quarterback. He mirrors the quarterback's hand. Great timing. Gets his hand up, deflects it up in the air. Jayon Brown, very, very aware player. He starts to move. He's got the running back here that he's looking at. He's got the running back. He comes back. He's very aware now. Ball is thrown. Jeffrey Simmons deflects it up in the air. And then Jayon Brown makes a very athletic move by going up, elevating, secure catch in the end zone. This is a huge takeaway at this point in the ball game. Another really, really big red zone interception by the Titans defense. The last puzzle I did, it was a thousand pieces. It takes a while, you know, with football and studying and all that stuff. I always mess up the the edge pieces, because you try to force them. What's crazy is the NFL was the fastest I got on the field. Like, playing as a rookie, that like shocked me a, a little bit. It's a blessing to, you know, be on the field. And I can't take it ever for granted, because I remember when I was sitting on the bench wanting to play so bad and, you know, play with my teammates and help them win. Like, I think that's why I have such a, a good time. I remember exactly what happened. It was the Eagles game last year. What went down? What, because what was the play call? And it was like, Jan, you calling the plays? And I'm like, oh. <laughs> like, I haven't done this before. You know, put it on, 
heard Dean talking. I was like, okay. I was a little, I said a little nervous about it because uh, calling head state's a big responsibility. You gotta be conditioned to be talking that much and knowing your assignment and stuff like that. Kid gotta grow up eventually and uh, and I did a lot growing up last year and I feel like I'm still continuing to grow as a as a football player and as a as a young leader on the team. You know, like when a play is needed, like it's like a few guys on the defense where you'd be like, all right, maybe he'll make a play, maybe he'll play. And I'm, I feel like I'm one of those guys now. So I just want to do anything to help the team win and be dependable. I'll say the teammates make me love my job as, as much as I love playing the sport. Coaching, the surrounding help that we get from, you know, marketing and media people and all that type of stuff. We have a lot of really cool people in this building and in this city. No other choice but to, you know, enjoy your moment here. Coming up on Titans All Access, the general manager stops by to preview game 15. John Robinson and a look at Titans Saints is next. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Titans All Access, joined by General Manager John Robinson. Last week, result wasn't what you wanted, but the offense put up 400 plus yards. Again, they stay in a groove. What do you like from the growth that you're continuing to see from the Titans offense? Yeah, I mean, I think we did some we did some good things. We just let some some points slip away from us um, early on there in the, in the game. But I thought, you know, the O-line continues to, to protect well and, and give Ryan time to, to stand in there and, and throw the ball. We're creating run lanes. We're mixing the run and pass together. We're coming up with some explosive plays and some wrinkles offensively to keep defenses on their heels. Speaking of offense, your opponent this week, the New Orleans Saints, has a quarterback by the name of Drew Brees. I'm sure you've heard of him. He's a pretty good player. Uh, now the NFL's all-time leader in touchdown passes after what he did on Monday night against Indianapolis. The guy's in year 19. How does Drew Brees continue to stress defenses into his 40s? Well, you said it. I mean, he's got about every record there is in, in you know, in, in the books. He's he's played, as you said, a, a lot of football. He's seen a lot of coverages. He's played with a lot of different players. He's excellent with his eyes and his shoulders, manipulating coverages, trying to get safeties and DBs to cheat one way to free up somebody on the backside. He's got outstanding instincts. He's a great leader. He's extremely accurate, and he's got playmakers. You know, this Michael Thomas, this guy's a problem. He's big, he's strong, he can play inside, he can play outside. He's a very instinctive player. He's strong in route, and he's got excellent catch skills. We think of the Saints as a passing team, but they have always run the ball well, and they have a two-headed monster at running back, Alvin Kamara and Latavius Murray. How do they divide up responsibilities among those two backs? Yeah, they're 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 similar, but but they're different. You know, Kamara is um, he played he played at Tennessee. He's an excellent athlete. They'll play him at slot receiver some. They get him the ball on these space plays, whether it's jet sweeps toss it to him. He's excellent in space. He catches the ball well. He's shifty. He's fast. And Murray, he's the downhill pound and, and bruise guy, but he's got really good catch skills too. He's really good in traffic to pick and slide and move the pile. So they're definitely a tandem to be reckoned with. The defense for New Orleans, better than it's been in years. What jumps out to you about what they've done well defensively in 2019? Well, I think Coach Allen's doing a really good job with those guys. He's mixing a lot of things uh, up over there. I think the one thing that jumps out is they're plus 11 in the turnover margin, which is fourth, you know, fourth in the league. So they're creating opportunities to get Drew and the offense back on the field to score points. They've got good players over there. Cam Jordan's a problem up front. Big Brown in the middle at nose tackle. Onyemata at D tackle. This linebacker, Demario Davis, is having an excellent season. And they're secondary, they're mixing pieces, whether it's Lattimore, Bell, Williams, whoever it may be on the blitzes, to really confuse offenses. New Orleans Saints are 11-3. They are already the NFC South champions. They come to Nissan Stadium for a noon matchup on Sunday. John Robinson, what are the keys to knocking them off? Yeah, well, I think it starts with us. You know, we've got to get back to the things and not have those slip-ups like we had against the Texans and and, and do things the, the way that we need to do them and, and be on our P's and Q's. We've got to take care of the football. You know, I alluded to the turnover margin. We've got to take care of the football, keep the football in our hands. If anything, try to steal possessions from those guys. Continue to mix our run and pass game, you know, offensively. And defensively, we've got to be sound fundamentally with our details, our technique, because if you slip up one time, Breeze is going to make you pay. John, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. All right. More coming up on Titans All Access. We've got good news and good nights. Stay with us. On the next 
Titans All Access. Jayon Brown has spent a lot of time in the end zone lately. He's a big play guy, and he's fast becoming one of the Titans' defensive leaders. Mike Keith sits down with Jayon Brown for the Nissan Insider. The Titans have spent December doing good works off the field seemingly everywhere. We'll show numerous Titans who are making a difference in the community, and we get you ready for the rematch with the Texans. All that and more on the next Titans All Access. Ben Jones plays great football at the center position for the Tennessee Titans. He also does great things in the community. That's why he's been selected as the 2019 Tennessee Titans Walter Payton Community Man of the Year. The question about Ben Jones in the community is not what he does, it's really what doesn't this guy do? That's actually a pretty good question because I think Ben Jones is at every single event. Not only does he go to his teammates' events, he also has his own foundation, the Jones Mission. He's just everywhere. There's so many things that Ben Jones does. He's a great Walter Payton Man of the Year. Here's a great example of Ben Jones' heart. He is from Bibb County in Alabama, that's Centerville, Alabama. Just recently, he brought the seniors from his high school, the current seniors, up to Nashville for a pizza party and to check out a game. Something really meaningful in the lives of those young men, all from the kindness of Ben Jones heart. Absolutely, what better way to spend a weekend than be in Nashville eating pizza at an NFL training facility? That's good stuff. Pretty cool. Well put. Yeah. You have put the cap on this program. Well, you know that's what I'm here for. She is Amy Wells, absolutely the best. I'm Mike Keith, thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time. Really feeling the Christmas spirit, Mikey. Well, you did well for one. <laughs>